Honestly, the Kingston S18 had been one of my most anticipated electric unicycle of 2020. Of course, I was blown away by its spectacular design and intrigued by its revolutionary suspension. And now that I had some solid riding time on this wheel and put it through its paces, it's finally time for me to talk about what I think of it. Is it the best thing since sliced bread? Or is it a gimp, slow, short range wheel? And of course, does it live up to the promise of having the best EUC suspension of 2020? This week, we review the Kingsung S18. Are you ready? Roll the intro. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and hit that bell icon to be notified of new episodes and stay to the end for a preview of what's coming up next. This is the Ben 10 BRC40. It was designed by Carl's Probes at the request of the US Army in 1940. Probes was a talented freelance engineer who amazingly drafted the plan for what would eventually become the Jeep in just 18 hours. It was the first 4x4 ever mass produced with 650,000 built during World War II alone. And it was also during the war that Jeep solidified its reputation for toughness, durability, and versatility. And I think the development of suspension is as important to the electric unicycle as it was 4x4 to the car. We only have a single contact patch. Having it firmly planted into the ground isn't just a matter of comfort, but rather for control as well as power transferring. That is the promise of the Kingston S18. And it is hard to talk about this wheel without talking about its suspension design since it is pretty much built around Around it. it is where most of the engineering was focused on doing its development since aside from the suspension, the specification of the S18 is honestly slightly disappointing. It utilized the same 2200 watt motor, same as the 18XL, which I wrote earlier this year when I was in Taiwan. It also utilized an 1100 watt hour battery pack, which is the smallest amongst all the 18 inch flagship wheel released this year. At 55 pounds, it isn't that much lighter than the V11, which carries an additional 400 watt hour worth of batteries. And at $1,900, it isn't that much cheaper either. There is, of course, the stunning open case design, and it isn't just for aesthetic, but also to accommodate all the moving parts associated with the suspension system and to ergonomically fit the rider, since despite its thicker width, this is a wheel that feels no thicker than the V11 when you're riding it. And if anything, it actually feels a little bit too thin for me, despite the fact that Kingsong had added additional thickness to the padding for the production version of this wheel. And one downside of having a sculpted shell is that it accommodated less variation on your riding style as it is kind of designed for a specific stance. And if somehow your stance is different, it may actually be a little bit tougher for you to adapt to the ergonomic of this wheel. The only criticism I have against its design are that in my opinion there is a misalignment between what this wheel does and what it look like. For instance, I think the problem with the Veteran Sherman isn't that the pedals are too low or that it can't overcome long steep hill climb, but rather that it is a high speed performance road wheel, but it doesn't look like one. It is essentially a Lamborghini that looked like a Jeep and as a result, people keep trying to ride it like a Jeep. And in some way, the Kingston S18 has the opposite problem. But at least this is a pretty durable Lambo as my sample wheel just about taken every kind of hits possible and seem to be holding up well so far. As to conveniences, the S18 have neither a Bluetooth speaker or decorative LED lights. I don't really miss them since I personally feel that if anything they make prior wheels feel a bit toy-like. But I get that some people disagree. 
The headlight is bright, not quite as bright as the one on the V11, and the thin tail light is really cool looking, but likely not terribly visible. And like all previous Kings on Wheel, the S18 has a solid trolley handle, and although I wish that it was diagonal, like the 18XL rather than perpendicular, still at 38 inch high, it works really well in controlling the wheel. Much better than anything you will find on, uh, let's say, a Gatway. The configuration of the lift handle and the cutoff is slightly finicky, but I understand King Song's desire to not further increase the height of this already very tall wheel. But aside from the design, the main selling point of the S18 remain its suspension. But before we get into the specific, I want to talk about why I think the development of suspension is so crucial to electric unicycle. And to do that, we need to talk about the three C's of suspension. And that is contact, control, and comfort. First, we have contact, which is how power transfer actually occurs for both acceleration and braking, and without which, torque is meaningless. And on bad surfaces, without suspension, wheel bounce as speed and when your tire isn't touching the ground there is no power transfer either good suspension dampen dips and bumps and keep your contact patch firmly planted on the ground and the s18's superior suspension really shined here and to control which for euc is via pressure apply to the pedal that is generated from you shifting your center of gravity in four different directions. The problem being that when you hit a bump that makes you jump, it's shifting your center of gravity up, which doesn't help you with steering at all. I have had my foot leave the pedal on several occasions, and yes, you can cushion yourself with bent knees, but to do that while attempting braking and acceleration is difficult at best, even for the most skilled rider. Suspension help reduce that lapse of control input by stabilizing the pedal which remember is also how we steer and finally comfort which is the one aspect of suspension that have been widely discussed and the only thing i would add to that is that especially for longer trip if you have to ride over a rough roads for a prolonged periods of time it's going to wear you out very quickly and as a result reduce your ability to respond to unexpected conditions like uh this and this is why I think that effective suspension isn't just a matter of comfort, but also for safety and performances. It is a very difficult problem to solve, so let's take a look at what King Sun have done. I think the first thing you need to know about hip-hop. The S18 is fitted with a pivot base single piston suspension as opposed to the slider base dual piston suspension on the V11. Since the design offset the actual piston away from the side of the wheel, it accommodated a much larger and modular progressive air shock that could also potentially be upgraded for as long as you find shocks that match the same length. There is three different settings you can adjust on this shock there is the upper fill chamber that controls the, the amount of cushion you get, the lower negative chamber which controls the pressure of the rebound, and finally a dial on top of the shock to control rebound speed, which is the one setting that the V11 shock does not offer. There is also this blue switch which let you lock and unlock the shock if you want to ride without it for any reason. These settings will need to be modified based on your weight and ride conditions, so sound experimentation is required to get the dial in just right and proper tuning including factoring in tire pressure is critical as I find that different settings drastically change the ride feel. For me, 220 over 80 with 35 psi tire was harsh and tiring with the wheel feeling unstable at speed but when I dropped it down to 180 over 60 with 25 psi tire the ride felt stable, comfortable and just right for me. The geometry of the suspension system also accommodated a lower pedal height which translated to improved control and stability as well as reduce the severity of wheel wobble at higher speed. The aluminum trellis support frame combined with the beefy tubular steel slider means that the overall system is stiffer. I sense zero torsional flex at all points of the suspension travel and ride control always felt sharp and precise. The other advantage of King's on suspension design is that it allows them to minimize the amount of unsprung weight to that of a wheel and the hub motor assembly. And by that I mean the weight that is below the suspension and as a result must move to follow the terrain. 
Not only does this allow a wheel to move more freely and improve suspension performances, it also cushion and protect the components that is above the suspension, including the battery packs and control board against roll vibrations. The S18 handles potholes and row irregularities equally well, even better than my Gotway Monster. This is one of the worst cobblestone streets here in Soho, and I avoid riding it even when I'm on my 22-inch Monster because it is both jarring to ride as well as the fact that it bounced me all over the place so badly that I have to significantly slow down in order to maintain control. The S18, on the other hand, handled most of it effortlessly while holding full traction at all times and I was able to carve, turn, accelerate and brake normally. The strength of the suspension also made the S18 the best electric unicycle I have ever ridden on off-road trails. The agility and responsiveness of this wheel meant that I never felt held back by it when it comes to navigating unexpected terrain and conditions. And because of the improved traction, I was able to climb steeper slope on the trail than even the EUC Torque Champ, the Gateway MS Pro. The downside of this design is that you now have components inside of the case that is moving against one another. Oh, this is a really steep hill. And I've been told that the pre-production unit, which I'm riding right now, actually used to exhibit sound signs of parts rubbing together that I haven't actually felt myself. And by keeping the suspension inboard of the case, the S18 does appear to be more durable. Given the amount of use the demo wheel stood up to, it's quite reassuring that it has continued to work. Good thing since despite its sleek appearances, this is not a wheel you want a baby, since where it is most at home is off the beaten path and on the trails. All the more reason why holding a wheel demo in just any old boring park won't do, and that is why we have come to the High Bridge Park. far uptown on the northern tip of Manhattan in the Fort George neighborhood. Because of this, the only open to the public mountain bike dirt tracking in New York City, complete with insane jumps. Admittedly, not many of us have prior experience with this type of track, but it does highlight the unique strength of the S18. Disregarding even the performances, you see how much fun everyone is having trying to do the jumps? By the way, King Sound has subsequently updated the wheel so that the sideway lean cutoff can be adjusted. This makes a huge difference since now you can really ride those banked tracks. Alright, so what is the verdict? Having ridden both the King Song S18 as well as the Motion V11, I can confidently say that I absolutely believe that suspension is the future for an electric unicycle. And that King Song had pushed the technology with the S18 further than anyone else. And that it is a blast to ride. Yes, you do have less wrench to work with, and no, this is not a fast wheel as it is still capped at 31 miles per hour like all the other King Sun wheels. But those aren't the reason why you want the S18. If you intend to do any off-road riding, it is likely your best bet, as it is the tighter, more nimble, and tunable choice. But more than that, those qualities that makes it shine in the woods applies equally on the pavement. The best-in-class suspension translate directly to better grip and control on the road, and riding the S18 reminds me of how it feels to drive a BMW. And I think that if you enjoy riding an EUC, you can't help but love riding this wheel. Oh 
man, look at the time. I somehow managed to waste another 10 minutes of your life, but I hope you enjoyed it. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and check out the link to my Patreon page if you like to support my work. And as much as we all love electric unicycle, the only way for us to get better wheel is to grow as a community. So tell your friends and teach them how to ride and get them hooked. While I wait for my V11 to get repaired, fun with the S18 continues.